Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and today I would like to do a kind of draw with me in my sketchbook. I have had this ELO sketchbook for I think a year now and um, I've been so excited to try it that I've been too scared to try it. So I think I've sketched one or two things in here and the kids have sketched in here but I really want to work on filling a sketchbook this year. And I know that the year's half over and I haven't gotten very far on that goal, but I'd like to work on it today. So I think that's what we're going to do for today's video. And um, I've been watching a lot of like sketchbook flip throughs lately. And it's been really interesting to see when people do kind of mixed media um, accent colors and just studies and OCs and stuff just laid out on the page with plants and random things and I think that's what I'd like mine to look like so hopefully I can make a start on that today and I would like you to come draw with me so um, I think I'm gonna do this in draw with me format as I said so I'll be talking while I'm drawing and if you want to grab your sketchbook and draw with me that'd be great too so let's get started okay so I have decided on the perfect use for all the stickers I've been getting lately <laughs> and I think what I'm gonna do these are mine my stickers that I made but I think what I'm gonna do is each time I draw in my sketchbook I get to <laughs> reward myself by being able to place one sticker somewhere inside and today I think I'm gonna start with one of the larger stickers that I received from Sonia Stegemann so I ordered these three um, Zodiac girls and she sent me a bunch of extras including these two little ones so I'm gonna use one of these I think and I think I'm gonna start with this girl cuz really liking her aesthetic today all right I want to put her maybe towards this side here I don't really want to cover up the name of the sketchbook, but I'm thinking like right here would be perfect. I feel like if I place the larger ones first, it'll be easier to place smaller ones around them as I go. So that was the thinking behind that. Um, I am going to keep this first page open because I have plans to make a fun title page and it's I'm just not up for it yet I'm too intimidated so we're gonna go ahead and skip this page and start right in on the first full page spread and I will try to fill this spread with you today but first things first I need to find something to draw so I'm going to take out my phone here and go to Pinterest and see what I can find and get started from there I really like this picture of this older gentleman skateboarding because that's not something you see every day. <laughs> so maybe I will start with that one. It's got some really great wrinkles in the clothing that would be fun to practice. And I don't usually draw older people so that might be a good, good practice for me. I have my handy dandy pencil case that I got from the Jazza's Jazzy Art Box and I'm going to go ahead and use my cola erase pencil I think for some sketching as you can see I'm kind of holding my pencil in a bit more of a loose hold I'm trying to um, not get too caught up in details right at first and just try and get the proportions right and the relationship from one body part to the other which I've already messed up so <laughs> I'm just trying to kind of I had my gesture line and now I'm just trying to flesh out where the body is where the clothes are and make sure I get everything lined up properly and this isn't gonna come out hundred percent perfect because I'm also looking at this at um, probably the wrong angle because I have to sit far enough back that my head's not in the camera. <laughs> it's about where the hand is. 
it feels a little bit too long. Yeah, I do feel like this arm's too long. I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. Okay, this is looking better. His head is in the wrong spot in my sketch, so let's get rid of that. This is something I definitely never would have chosen to draw if I wasn't just looking at random references and picking the first one that kind of caught my interest. <laughs> but I do think this will be valuable practice, so maybe it's a good thing. It's definitely out of my comfort zone. Okay, now I've got the kind of gesture down and where everything's supposed to go. I'm going to kind of take a look at it here and just see if there's anything I want to adjust. Add a few more details. And I'm really going to try to keep these quick because I don't I don't want to make this like full pieces. That's not the purpose of this. The purpose is just to try to quickly get down what I see and work on practicing being able to do that quickly, which is not something I'm great at. <laughs> do you guys struggle with doing studies and drawing quickly? <laughs> Definitely find it something that I have struggled with for a long time. I'm paying special attention to the wrinkles in the clothing because that's something that I struggle with. I get really quiet sometimes when I'm concentrating and I'm still getting used to this whole talking while drawing thing so I apologize if there's long periods in which I don't say a word. Maybe if I could think about something to talk about. Oh, oh yeah, okay, so, so we're trying the HBO um, Free trial on Amazon and I thought hey this is my chance because I've never seen Game of Thrones I know crazy right and um, I did start reading the book at one point and I got really mad at it not very far in <laughs> threw it across the room and never really picked it up again But I thought maybe I'd do better with the show. Maybe I wouldn't get as invested um, or as upset. I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> anyway, so I started watching it this week. And it took me all of two episodes to decide it's just not for me, guys. <laughs> I might have mentioned before, but I have anxiety and... It definitely is triggered by certain types of shows and some don't bother it at all and a lot of times I won't know until I try a show but that one definitely set it off pretty good so do you guys like that show another one that I can't bring myself to watch is The Walking Dead I'm in the first place I'm not a huge fan of like zombie shows or movies but I also just think it's gonna be real dark real sad and when I watch shows I do it to be entertained and to have fun and I definitely feel like I wouldn't have fun with a show like that so to each their own I know a lot of people like those so I am not bashing that by any means <laughs> just me personally doesn't work for me All right, so far so good. I'm going to have to look at this image a bit closer to see if I can get some of these wrinkles right here on the front of his shirt. He's got like a his collar sticking out here. This guy actually has wrinkles not only on his clothes but also on his skin, which is another thing that I I'm definitely not practiced at. The angle here is definitely a little bit foreshortened and I'm not sure I got that across. 
think I'm going to go ahead and do a little shading with this pencil. And in case you're wondering, yes, I am currently avoiding <laughs> the, the face. <laughs> Probably not a smart idea. He has a good bit of shadow here and a good bit of shadow right through here. Okay. Now, face. He's got a cute little bald head and then his ear comes out here. And the rest of his neck goes that way. It's interesting because one side of his face is really shaded. And I have not left enough room for his mouth, so... <laughs> I think actually what needs to happen is this all needs to move up a bit. Maybe even the ear also, because that's part of what's throwing me off, I think. He's got some hair here. I think I'm going to go ahead and do his eyes and then his glasses, just so that I know everything's where it should be. There's a lot of shadow over here, so you can barely see any kind of definition in his eye. Okay, I'm going to call that good enough. It's definitely not perfect, but it's also not bad. Time to find something else to draw. I recently purchased these Pilot Color Eno sketching colored pencils, but they're mechanical and they each have their little erasers, so I thought that'd be fun to use. Uh, I'm gonna pick one and use that for the next sketch. And I'm hoping these will be dark enough that you can see them, <laughs> but we'll see. Ooh, so this, this image is really intriguing to me. Um, I really like the shape of the nose and face along with the freckles and then the cool way the hair is kind of a heart. So I might work on this one next. When I'm drawing a person's face, I always tend to start with just like the shape of the head. And because if I can get that right, it's much more likely that it'll turn out actually looking like the person. And I'm finding it interesting to draw what I see rather than what I would normally draw because I don't draw from reference as often as I should and I'm noticing that the way I think something's gonna go isn't often turning out the way it actually is on the reference so that's good knowledge for me just shows me I have a lot more to learn now you notice this time I didn't start with the the looser sketch. I'm interested to see how this comes out without that because I guess I'm just more comfortable drawing um, not the full body, basically. For this one I'm kind of just doing whatever feels good to me. I um, definitely am not as focused on being super accurate this time. I don't know why that is, but I'm really intrigued by his clothing and it's just being, it's really fun to draw. So I'm just enjoying it at this point, which is part of the point for sure. But so is um, getting quicker and better at what I'm doing. So hopefully there's going to be some of that too. Of course, anytime you draw, the end result is that you get more practiced at it, which is perfect for me because I love to draw. So <laughs> that just means I get to do it more and I have an excuse to. I think it would be fun to um, color this one with maybe like some watercolor. I'm super not comfortable with watercolor, but at the same time, like I want to practice it more and the sketchbook might be a good place to do that. Hopefully 
this is dark enough that you can see. I'm trying to think of this as a sculpture, a 3D sculpture, and not so much a 2D drawing. So what I'm working on right now is using the reference to help me chisel out the features and where they would go. Um, the planes of light on the face. I'm trying to shape this more or less the way it's shaped in the reference. I think it's close. It's got a really nicely shaped mouth. If you guys are working on some art, I'd love to see what you drew while you were watching this. You can tag me on Instagram or maybe just comment in the comments what you were working on. His eyebrows are interesting because they don't exactly look the same on either side. And his eyes are actually really far apart and quite large. Hopefully I can get these somewhat even. <laughs> That's too big. <laughs> so for this one I'm paying special attention to the shading on the face and where it is because that's another thing that I tend to just guess at and I'd really like to make sure that when I'm guessing I'm guessing somewhat correctly and not even I'm not even worried about getting it to look too much like the reference I'm just wanting it to look correct I guess pleasing so um one thing I'm noticing is that in the reference, he definitely looks as if he's looking at the camera, and I'm not sure mine comes across that way. <laughs> um, I don't know. What do you think? Does he look like he's looking at you guys? <laughs> Having fun playing with the hair, that's for sure. Even though the right thing to do at this point would probably be to make it all black like the reference, but I don't want to. So I managed to smudge all that up. Awesome, good job me. I'm gonna need to get myself um, a paper to put my wrist down on. Or move from left to right, I just find this more comfortable. <laughs> to be honest, I didn't think the cola erase pencils smudged that much, so that's something that's good to know for the future. <laughs> now part of the fun of this guy it's definitely the freckles on his face, and I'm wondering if I can get some of that color in there somehow. We'll see. We'll come back to it. Next, I want something to put up in here, and I'd like to go for some feet or hands. These are interesting because they are the bottoms of the feet, and that's not something you normally see, <laughs> so maybe I'll try that. See, now I'm too close to that already. Gotta start higher up, I guess. Or make it smaller. So for this foot, I'm kind of having fun finding the planes of the foot. And making it into simpler shapes. Rather than trying to go in and do photorealism on something that's definitely a bit more difficult. This little toe is squished. So getting back to shows, what are some of your favorite shows? I like um, Firefly is my all-time favorite. As for current shows, I am watching Stranger Things finally with my husband. We weren't sure at first if we would like it, but we're kind of pretty, pretty much into it now. Um, we're only on season two, so no spoilers, but we're really enjoying watching that together in the evenings. We also started watching Good Omens and we got partway into that. Maybe about halfway, I think. So we might finish that up next. <laughs> Do you guys watch TV with your family? My daughters are older, so um, there's some shows we can watch together now that up until now we haven't been able to so <laughs> um, this past year we spent with my friend Jessica and we all watched Friends together um, about four episodes a week 
and it was it was a blast because I have watched Friends for the first time um, when it was live when I was a teenager. Um, so I had to wait every week for the next part of the story and uh, many years I watched Friends with my dad and so being able to kind of live that with my daughters was fun and my friend Jessica had never seen it either so it was nice to be able to share that with them. This is actually turning out pretty well. Trying to put some indications in of where the raised parts of the feet would be versus the parts that are kind of more recessed. For some reason I really enjoyed this <laughs> drawing of feet <laughs> of all things. I think I'm going to use one of my Ohuhu markers to put a background on this one to make it stand out a little bit more. And then maybe later I'll try some watercolors on some of this if I'm feeling brave. <laughs> I have some things on the back here, just doodles, but I don't really care. I think a gray would be nice. This is the first time I've tried markers on this sketchbook, so I'm not really sure <laughs> how they'll do. It's not really made for markers, but it seems to be taking them pretty well. <laughs> Whoops, good job me. Guess we'll go a little higher with that, huh? I'd like to color this whole thing in with markers, but I'm not sure I have the colors that I'd need for that. So watercolor would be another option. I'm just <laughs> real intimidated by that, you know. I've only done it once. <laughs> And I have learned a lot since then by watching um, some watercolor videos from other YouTubers, but I don't know how much I've learned. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. I just thought it'd be fun. So we're putting some blue back here. I'm curious if they'll blend it all on this paper. And it looks like they kind of will. That was fun. I think I might fill these in with colored pencils, actually that is an option I have or or I could break out those watercolors uh, I think I'm gonna do it I'm gonna try the watercolors all right I'm gonna set that up and be right back guys all right let's see this one's called flesh tint that's probably pretty good to have in there um, and then maybe some brilliant red would be good and we'll start with those two and see where I get <laughs> got way more red than I meant to Oops, I need some paper towels. I've heard the ceramic palettes are better for mixing. I just um, don't have one, so... Oh gosh, let's see how this goes. So far so good, I guess? It's really light right now, and that's fine. I'm gonna try and add shading to it later. And I'm already able to tell that this is working out better than the first time I tried watercolor. <laughs> so there's that. I'm trying to get a fairly even wash if I can. I'm trying not to let it dry too much before I'm done moving it around, I guess. All right, and it seemed to work pretty well with my orange colored pencil. I'd like to get a little bit of red mixed in here and just try to add some shading and I don't know if that's gonna be a dark enough color difference or not <laughs> it's definitely buckling a bit but I know that this is not watercolor paper so I'm not surprised <laughs> and it it seems to be working okay I'm gonna let this dry for a while and then I think I'm gonna come back in with some colored pencils and color that I'm not sure if I want to tackle anything else <laughs> Maybe I'll just do skin tone on this guy. Ugh, guys. I'm trying to be careful not to smudge the pencil too much to where you can't see what's happening. At the same time, though, I like the effect it's giving where it's smoothing out and blending out the shading that I did with the pencil. Yeah, I got way too much color out here, so since I have all of that color, I guess I might as well keep going. <laughs> try to add it to the gentleman here. It's gonna be interesting with the blue. I'm not sure what it'll do. I guess we'll see. 
It's definitely mixing with it, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about this. <laughs> Alright, so I colored the wheels on the skateboard. <laughs> this is fun. Maybe his glasses need to be some red color. I don't know. Why not? Okay, I'm going to let that dry a bit, and then I think I'm going to come back in um, and use some colored pencils on these guys. Okay, this guy's not very dry yet, but this one's pretty dry, so maybe I'll try and do a bit of detailing on him. I'm using my new Faber-Castell colored pencils that I got from Jazz's art box also. I really like them. I'm trying to use a really light touch and I don't have the same exact colors that um, were in the photo but that's okay because I'm just letting my creativity take over here <laughs> this would probably be a good color to do those freckles with so maybe I'll try that I don't want to ruin him but sketchbook is for experimentation so if you're gonna do it anywhere this is the place to do it and I think I drew this one eye too big, but hey! <laughs> and it looks like they're pretty much all over. <laughs> um, going down his nose over to the right side of his face, which is really cool. And unique. I really like the look of colored pencils layered on top of markers and or watercolors. I think it's a really soft, beautiful look, and I want to try and get more of that into my everyday routine. Maybe not every day, but... So I've managed to flatten out his nose here pretty good. I'm going to try and build it back up again. <laughs> now his hair is definitely black, but I'm going to go in with brown and put the brown in and see how that mixes with the pink underneath and then maybe go back in with black and see how it looks. I was planning to do a whole like two page spread but this has already been um, <laughs> over an hour. We're at like an hour and a half at this point so I know I'm gonna have to cut a lot of it out already so I don't wanna do another whole spread that I have to do that with this video would get insanely long. <laughs> Since his hair is curly, I'm trying to make sure that I don't do straight lines of color when I'm coloring in his hair. It would just send the wrong message, I think. <laughs> One thing I'm noticing is that I'm falling back into my old habit of um, not having enough contrast between light and dark in my sketching and here I am rubbing against this again let's see there we go and I don't know why that tends to be I think I, I feel like if I put too many darks down that I'm gonna take away from the details of the image which is probably true but it's also right. Sometimes you don't see all the details because they're in shadow and that's okay <laughs> and I have to allow myself to start exploring that and there's no better place to do that than in the, spe the sketchbook so i see what I can do here with this guy and maybe add some more darkness somehow. It probably would have been good if I had done a wash for his hair. I didn't think about it when I had my watercolors out but it would have been good to have like a base color down for his hair. I could even have done it with markers probably. I just w would prefer to have markers that are lighter. So my Ahuhu markers don't have many light colors, especially in the brownish range. So I'm not sure that it would have been that I could have gotten the right color. So we're doing it this way. <laughs> It's, I, I love how many layers you can get with these colored pencils. They're just, they're so nice. 
I'm trying to get a really nice saturated black down here where his hair falls into the background. And I'll probably go for something a little bit lighter up in the top. I completely covered up his ears, but <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's alright. We're not going for perfection. We're just having fun. <laughs> I'm really happy to be working in my sketchbook and moving towards this goal I've had of trying to get more sketchbook work done. I feel like I've waited too long <laughs> and I could have been doing this long time ago, but it's hard when you, you don't have much time and I have a lot more time now than I used to. I still feel like I don't have all the time in the world <laughs> with all the things I want to do. There's just too many things but have more time, so I'm choosing to dedicate some of it to this because this is a goal that I have had. And I figure this will be a great place to do studies and just improve my art in general overall, especially since I can't be too much of a perfectionist and <laughs> like I'd have to erase everything if I wanted to resize something, whereas in my digital art, I very much am a perfectionist and don't want to quit redoing something until it's perfect in my eyes or as perfect as I can get it um, and so my digital art takes a lot longer than it needs to because of that <laughs> and I'm no longer using the reference here I'm just kind of having a good time with the colored pencils and the hair and it's really fun one of the things I do miss from digital art when I'm working on traditional art is being able to flip my canvas. That's something I do constantly because it really helps me to figure out whether or not I'm getting things looking correct and not being able to do that <laughs> is definitely causing some issues for me. It's a crutch, I know! <laughs> I bet if we flip this guy, he looks completely wonky. <laughs> it's okay. I have to keep reminding myself, this is not finished work. This is just for fun, just for practice. Nobody's counting on me to make this look good, other than myself. <laughs> My huge perfectionist self. <laughs> Okay, now his shirt is kind of a gray, but it's like a stripy gray. So I'm thinking if I just go in with this black here and make little hash marks, that should do it. It's like small stripes, you know. I just want to give the impression of texture here. And I think that does it pretty well. Alright, this jacket here is mostly white, but it definitely has kind of a blue tint to the shading on it. So I'm going to go over my pink with blue and just kind of try and get those, um, it's got little quilted squares, so I'm going to try and get those in here in blue. And then also maybe color the shirt in blue lightly, because the shirt is kind of a blue-black trying to have a really light touch with this shirt because I don't want the strokes to compete with the stripes, I guess. The strokes of the pencil. It's interesting how the blue is mixing in with the black, which is mixing in with the original pink. Definitely fun to see. I feel like he needs a little bit more color in his lips now. I don't really have like a more of a reddish pink, so I'm going to try and go in with the red and just lightly add to the pink that's already there and see if I can get it looking somewhat decent. <laughs> I also have this kind of magenta color, so I'm going to try that too. I just don't want it to be too much. And so far it looks like it's not too, too much. 
I'm really not happy with what I've done with the nose shading here, so I'm going to try and lighten it up a little bit, but I don't know if it'll do any better. And since these are colored pencils, maybe I can erase some. Worked pretty well. Here's some more blue shading here. Okay, he's kind of reminding me of Willy Wonka from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You know, <laughs> the Johnny Depp version. I don't know why. Or maybe the Mad Hatter. <laughs> That's not exactly what I was going for, but I'm not mad. Okay, now for these feet, I do want to just add a little bit to their color. I'm going to have to be very careful because this red is a whole lot darker than the feet are. <laughs> I don't want it to look too jarring, you know? Being very, very, very light. But these colored pencils are so pigmented, <laughs> they are going down darker than I mean for them to, even though I'm being so light. Which is okay, because I think I can come back with the eraser and just lighten it up a tad, which I can. Awesome. I think I'm going to line these with the brown to get them looking more like feet again. And I love lining with colored pencil because I feel like I can get a really light look versus lining with a liner, where stuff has to be kind of... I mean, they make colored liners, I just don't have any, but at the same time, even, even if it's colored, the ink is a lot more, I guess, harsh, um, clean, whereas colored pencils have kind of more of a earthy texture to them that I really like. I'm going to go over this red with some of the brown and see if that helps any, which I think it is. Just kind of blends in better. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we need a little bit more red on this foot to make it match the other one. Just the lightest of touches. <laughs> <laughs> this guy <laughs> cracks me up. I feel like he needs a little bit of something too. Maybe um, I could color his pants or at least go around his glasses here, make them stand out. I am lining this with the brown pen also as I have done everything else on this page and I feel like that will help keep things kind of, I guess, cohesive throughout the spread. This guy's going to mostly just stay blue, but <laughs> at least we'll get more detail if we can see some lines. So that was my thought. I don't know. This poor guy <laughs> he does not look very symmetrical at all. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and color the belt in a bit darker. Well, this may not be super accurate, but it has been pretty darn fun. <laughs> So I'm not even mad. When I woke up this morning, I had no idea I'd be drawing an older gentleman skateboarding, so... Gotta love it when your day holds surprises like that, right? <laughs> now his shoes in the original picture were brown, so I'm thinking it might be kind of fun to color them in brown. Just to add some more... Because we have darker contrast up here, and then the belt. So it might be fun to have that down here too. Definitely going to do this. Color in these parts that were already shaded. I'm digging the red wheels. It might be fun to tie more red in by just kind of giving this guy a little bit of a red accent off to the side here. I have no idea if this was a good idea or not, but we're going with it. It might be fun to go in with my Posca pen and make a white line between this red and the gentleman. 
just to help define him from the background. I say background in air quotes because this is not <laughs> really a background. <laughs> For some reason, my Posca pen doesn't always have the most opaque line, and I think it's because I need to pump it or something. But when I pump it, a whole, a whole blob comes out, so I don't really know. <laughs> Maybe if anyone out there is more experienced with Posca pens, they can let me know what I'm doing here that's not correct. Because a lot of paint seems to be coming out, but it doesn't seem to be very opaque. I don't know. Now I'm kind of thinking he'd look good with some khaki pants. Are these two skin tone? Who knows? Okay, so that is what I got done this afternoon in approximately an hour and a half. <laughs> Hopefully you drew along and had a great time. If you did, I'd love to see what you drew and hear what you think about my funny little sketches here. And yeah, maybe we can do this again. This was fun. And also, oh, I should, um, I should write the date here. Now I know this page was done today and I can see how long it takes me to get to the end. Thank you for being here with me and I will see you all next week. Bye friends.